tonight in a theme that rhymes. God, work with my mind. Get me prepared for what you have for me. There are many of you, you don't have things tonight that you should have. Therefore, we should already be possessing certain things tonight, but you don't have it. You don't have it. And the reason you don't have it is your mind. You have to recognize your enemies. And Paul did. Notice Galatians 2. Paul recognized his enemies as being, number one, the unbelieving Jews. Who was Jesus' greatest enemies during his time on earth? Unbelieving Jews. You remember, they, they so were so unbelieving that Jesus could do a miracle. Come on, somebody. And the only thing they were worried about was, why did he do it on the Sabbath? One woman got healed who the Bible says Satan had bound for over 18 years. The only thing they wanted to know, why couldn't she get healed on another day? Do you realize how religious a person has to be to see a woman who's been bound for over 18 years, who I believe Jesus called a daughter of Abraham, who was a Jew herself, get free. And the only thing these folk worried about is what day he did it on. Y'all got to hear me tonight. And you have folk like that nowadays. If you don't know what you believe and why you believe, a person can ask you, well, why y'all not doing such and such? Y'all shouldn't be having church on no Sunday. Why you say that? Well, don't you know such and such, such and such? And now you come back thinking having church on Sunday is wrong. It's important to know what you believe and why you believe. That you don't allow nobody to talk you out of. Listen, what has changed your life? Am I right about that? Notice, because there are some folk that will come at you. Who are not excited about you being a new creation. There are folks in your family that won't get excited about you being a new creation. You still going to go do such stuff? You know, I don't do that no more. Oh, who you think you is? So you better than everybody now? Hey, I don't do that no more. We don't go there no more. We don't celebrate that no more. So I had a whole lot of folk knocking at my door last night. And, and just by them looking at my house, they know money wasn't a problem for no candy. They were knocking at the door. Look here, just, I know somebody home. <laughs> hey, little boy was peeping through the one the dead time. You can't peep in the house, son. But guess what? I, I didn't feel no pressure. I didn't feel bad for not opening my doors and handing out candy. Hopefully you didn't open your doors and hand out no candy. Well, pal, everybody in my, on my neighborhood do it. And so we didn't want to be the only one. Sometimes it's good to be the only one. Because you're not going to make me worship the dead. Come on, I don't care, but it's so fun. No, you got to look beyond that and know what makes that day so evil. When you are about a new way of living, don't let folk who are still caught up in what you came out of make you ashamed of who you are now. Come on. Now, I didn't go out there. I didn't open the door. I didn't be rude. We just cut the lights off. 
Now I'm being said, which is supposed to be an indication that you're not participating. I wasn't rude. Amen. Galatians 2. Now notice this. Let's pick it up at verse 3. I'm coming in. Galatians 2 and 3. Yet, this is Paul talking. Yet not even Titus, who was with me being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. See, back then what the Jews would do is they would take Greeks and Gentiles who were claiming to be in Christ. And if they had not been circumcised according to the law, they were actually telling people, you ain't saved. You ain't saved. Come on. Now, these folk done had this experience, but here come the Jews, and a lot of them would come from the main church or from the headquarters. Imagine how powerful that was for people like Peter and his crew to come to a, to a, 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 a babe church telling folk who just know they knew creations, know their ways and deeds are new. And tell them, so you ain't been circumcised. No, you ain't saved. You ain't saved. Y'all ain't keeping the law. Y'all ain't saved. Woo, what? It's quiet out there. So, so, so Titus was not compelled to be circumcised. See, he knew the truth. Now, this is what I want you to see. And this occurred because... A false brethren secretly brought in who came in self, in by self, to spy out our liberty which we had in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into what? These Jews came down, saw how the evil were living. And tried to put them, according to Paul, in bondage. Now I'm going to say something real strong. I hope y'all can get it. Because I'm seeing too much of people thinking that the more Jewish you become, the closer you get to God. That ain't so, saints. If you can change right now and start dressing just like they dress in Israel, that won't make you any closer to God. Come on, you can keep the feast, the Passover. Oh, it does not make you any closer to God. You may become feeling like you deeper than everybody else. I know I'm right about it. Well, Pastor, we're going to observe such and such. Well, I mean, you can do it, but now don't think that's making you, pulling you closer to God. Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm observing the week of atonement. You, Jesus was the atonement. We don't have to go through the week of atonement that he paid it all. When Jesus hung on that cross, gave up the ghost before he did so, he spoke something important. He said, it is finished. Because the law from the get-go was always leading to Jesus. It was always for telling of him. All those sacrifices. The priest could go in and had to atone for the people's sin. And when he went in to atone, they tied a rope to him. That if he wasn't right, when he went before the holies of holies to atone for people's sin, they could drag him out of there. Nobody has to go to God for you about your sins. Listen to me, preachers. That's the reason we don't believe in telling people to repeat what we say for them to be saved. 
say these words. You say them words. Now you say, no, you ain't got to repent of your sin. Open up your mouth. Accept Jesus for yourself. And see, when I'm telling y'all tonight, God just impressed this in me. Jesus paid it all. Uh, Jesus paid it all. And if a person got a problem with me saying that, hey, you got the problem, not me, because I'm in Christ. I said I'm in Christ. And if a person is in Christ and he or she is striving to keep the sayings, the teachings of Christ and his holy apostles and the written and reveal word. You good. What am I saying tonight that the law is bad, that the law is evil? No, it cannot be evil. It cannot be bad because it came from God. But Jesus fulfilled the law. Yes, he did. When they brought that woman to Jesus and folk who don't believe this, you have to ask them one question. When Jesus told the crowd who had a right by the law to stone that woman caught in adultery, he said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. He showed her grace. All of them walked away. He said, has anybody condemned you? She said, no, my Lord. He said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. This is what I want you to know. Did Jesus that day, did he break the law or fulfill the law? Because if you say he broke the law, then I'm going to show you where the lamb had to be sinless, blameless, and spotless. He who knew no sin took on our sin. So you can't lay sin on him. When he told a man, that was at the pool for 38 years laying there. He told that man, take up your bed and walk. Don't you know Jesus knew if the Pharisee and Sadducees see him, it's unlawful for him to carry his bed. But do you want to know something about the law? Even the fathers couldn't keep it. Come on. I'm talking right. Look at Stephen in Acts 7 when he disputed with the unbelieving Jews. He took them all the way back from Abraham, who is the father of the Hebrews. But where does Abraham come from? Abraham himself came from pagans. That's when God told Abraham in the beginning, get away from your father's house. Why? His father's house was evil. They were idol worshippers. Look at Acts 7. Oh Lord. Notice what Moses himself says. I told you it's going to be informative. Moses is the lawgiver. A great man of God. A great man of God. I said a great man of God. And see, people accuse you of despising Moses. No, Moses was a great man of God. Great man that led them out of Egypt. But Jesus is greater than Moses. Come on, somebody. I'm teaching so good tonight. Jesus is greater than Moses. Now, I want you to hear it out of Moses' mouth. And see, they stumbled. Paul was preaching one time, and he said, we preach Christ crucified. If you're preaching Christ crucified, then you're preaching salvation. But he said, we preach Christ crucified. Listen carefully. To the Jews, it's a stumbling block. Because, see, they don't believe in the new creation. This new man, this new woman that you are, is people don't believe in it. They don't believe you knew. 
They don't believe you can be in Christ and change like that. Come on. That's reason it's important if you name it to live it. To live it. You got to live it in front of your family. You are not perfect, but you need to live what you profess. It's important that you live it. Especially if you're in any type of leadership. You don't want to do anything where your actions can be a stumbling block to other people. I don't want to become a stumbling block to y'all. Come on. Notice Acts 7, 37. I got one more script and then I'm done. This is that Moses who said to the children of Israel or to the Israelites. Stephen going to recall what Moses said to the Israelites themselves. Did he quote him Moses? The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall what? Him you shall what? Moses is there. When he get here, listen to him. 